Like on the way to Denver Comedy Works, you needed the espresso. I would stop to, at, to stay. I would stop in Westminster. I'd stop in the Denver Mall. I would show up at the at the Comedy Works with twelve hundred in my pocket. On the way there, I'd like the Comedy Works open mic started at eight. I'd leave my house at six and stop in Bloomfield, Westminster, and just stop at the malls. I need money. You use all this stuff when you play these roles. Uh, do you use all the stuff that you've done? What's in and, my mind? Right, it's, it's yeah. never leaves my mind. I, I don't. I've never put it away. I, I did it. I got to own up to it. Right, but you can use that when you play a character. You can use that those memories to be that, that character. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's what I do. When I have an audition, I look at it. I give the guy a fake name. Like if you call me and you go, I want you to play Frank. Right. I make him Frank Luigi. I give a background on him. Born in the Bronx. His father fucking worked on shoes. His mother was a a Sicilian immigrant, and I'll just write out his background. Right. He started, he's a loan shark today, but he started out running errands for Enzo the Baker. <laughs> I just make up shit. Right. And that's that background to you, that character. You have that story, and it that everything makes sense. That story to yeah. Now, how long did, did it take after college to try, did you get a job broadcasting? Uh, no, because I didn't want to work in like Eau Claire, Eau Claire, Wisconsin, or something like that, being a, I was terrible as an interviewer. I always wanted to be a guest on like the Tonight Show and stuff like that. I wanted to be the person being interviewed. I always loved those comedians that would go on there, old school, be like a Jonathan Winters or even people promoting movies, Robin Williams or something like that. That's what I wanted to be was just a guest on a on a late night show. Um, but I went, I, I I graduated from college. I tried stand up one time. It was a, a night at a dance club, and they'd shut the dancing down for a comedy and um, music show to be played. And yeah, people want to dance people and screw. People want to coke and fuck. Y- yeah, it was, it was unbelievable. And I went up and I just remember trying to do a Robin Williams impression. I'm like, I'm Robin Williams. Nothing. I go, no, I'm not. And I was the saddest. <laughs> I was bearded Robin Williams in like Awakenings or something with just like, oh, this isn't working at all. And I thought it was me. And it probably was partially me not ready to do that kind of event because I was supposed to be the host of it. But as you know, comedy, you have to do comedy in a venue that people are expecting comedy. And I later learned that and used these types of experiences uh, to just say no to other gigs as they came along. At the beginning, you take a lot of things that you probably shouldn't. But you also learn from that in some ways, but you know things are going to suck. And then you get to a certain point and you go, I'm just not taking those sucky you know, gigs anymore. Um, but I, then I went, I graduated from college and I started to, I actually got hurt. I hurt my back and believe it or not, I was from tying my shoe. Uh, I leaned down to tie my shoe and my back went out and then I couldn't stand up straight for like a month. So I started working on a bunch of impressions and then I went up at a comedy club, the Comedy Cafe, which was run by JD. Is he? What happened to him? I maybe the mob got him. No, I, I heard he had a stroke. Oh, really? Oh, That's okay. the last I heard. Because he, he sold it, he had a stroke. There was nothing like he was the nicest guy in the world to me. Big Samoan guy, but thought he was Six Italian. Six foot seven. Yeah, four hundred would he, take you to eat on Thursday. Oh, and when he pay when he pay you a, a briefcase desk. and a gun would go up there and go, "Hey, you ready for this?" I'm like, "What? <laughs> Worry for what?" How many times did you work for him? Oh, tons. He he gave me work. All, he was the first person to ever give, give me work. Gave me work all the time. He's like, you. He'd say stuff like, uh, "How much time you got? How much freak? How much time you got?" I'd be like, "Like three minutes, five minutes." He goes, "I'll tell you what. Uh, we'll put you up. Uh, steal a bunch of stuff and go up there." I'm like, "I'm not gonna do that." <laughs> He's like, "We'll figure something out. You're you're killing with the crowd because I just go up and do impressions and nobody was doing that at the time." He's like, can you come back next week? Well, I, then I then I was I'd hurt my back, got sick for a while, and was out. And I come back a year later. He's like, where, where you been? I was like, I was hurt. He's like, I don't care, get back up there. And he started working me again. I mean, this is literally the second and third time I've been up on stage, and he's just putting me to work. And I get to work with some cool people coming through. Um, what year was this? This is probably ninety. The first time was probably ninety. Five, uh, graduate from college, 96, 95-ish, and then back in 96, I think, somewhere. You heard your back that bad? Yeah, I couldn't I couldn't do it. I couldn't get out of bed. Just from tying your shoelace? Well, I, 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 had a, I had a knee injury when I was younger. And uh, when I was 14, I destroyed my I mean, We were playing. I was a running back in football. I'm the same size now that I was then, maybe 20 pounds lighter. But I was pretty fast. And for you know a suburban high school freshman team, they couldn't. They couldn't tackle me, 
So, but I was running out. Was we we're pl- scrimmaging the sophomores. I ran a sweep to the right, and I get hit by a guy high and a guy low, and my knee just buckled and went out, and uh, it never really recovered. So I would. I was also a catcher in baseball, and I would catch off kilter. I would catch with one leg fully bent, and my left leg, which was destroyed, would never wouldn't bend all the way, and it screwed up my back. So then, back issues happened for the rest of my life. So this is five six years later. I'm just, I could be doing anything and my back just went out and that just happened really bad one time when I was a freshman and sophomore in college somewhere in there must have been yeah it must have been soft junior year probably junior year and um I was just out for a while I couldn't do anything I was just I couldn't go to school I couldn't I couldn't physically couldn't get up out of bed because I couldn't walk um and that was at least two weeks, and then it took some more time. I probably milked it some after a little while. Like then you get scared about going back because you missed a month, you know, two weeks of college. What am I going to do? But I was doing all the work at the time. There wasn't even email or anything like that. I was just having to call people and get the work. And I think they they liked that enough that I was taking the initiative to do that. Um, that you know, I got through and made it. You know, work with the teachers, and I think I, I probably got A's in the classes, broadcasting journalism classes aren't that hard it's not like i'm doing physics or something so uh then when i came back after college because i just said you know i'm gonna get my degree right now i got it just because that's what you do not for any other reason other than that and then i uh and then i went back out and i started working right away people started paying me to do stand-up i got on the college circuit in a year because i'm 24 years old 20 23 years old and at that point doing colleges that was experimental to now you do a college they don't want you to say anything. Back then, you could get away with whatever. And I even say get away. I don't mean get away with. It was just a time to f- speak freely and say what you thought. And now it's the, the speech police at colleges. It's ridiculous. So I can I ask you a question? Yeah. That's the point as, of the show. As, as a young man, were you privy to impressions? Like, were you already getting in front of the family going, hold on, hold on. Just, just at, you know, how did a you know you bit. had this gift? I think I always did some of it as a high school student i would do impressions of friends and stuff oh, and teachers we had a teacher mr christensen who's he was also the basketball coach he's like mr kelly and do me a favor can you come up uh, and show us on the map where the atlantic ocean is and i'd go up there and be like an idiot i'm like is it the blue part you know and he'd be like go sit down and he would, he would kind of mess with me because i didn't know anything about geography um, but there was this guy, Darren Barsh, who like he, he always had the, the uh, comb in his back pocket and he'd feather his hair and his nostrils would flare. So I'd do impressions of him and a couple other people and watch Saturday Night Live and in Living Color and do all the Damon Wayans characters. And, you, me, thank you, couple questions. you know, that kind of thing or the fire marshal. But let me show you something. So I'm doing all those things, stuff you wouldn't use in your stand up act because it's somebody else's character. And then I started working on nobody was doing impressions of people how they actually are people were doing impressions of characters in movies so i would do the robin williams where you'd be the serious robin williams and you'd tell a story we're going in like fucking marines you understand me welcome to church motherfucker 